Hi, today we're going to talk about German adjectives. This video is going to be a little bit longer than usual, so please bear with me. We're going to start out by talking about what all of the cases do in the German language, then we're going to talk about adjectives after der words, adjectives after ein words, and unpreceded adjectives. I've added timestamps in the description of this video so that you can skip over the parts that you don't want to see and go straight to the parts that actually interest you. So if this video is too long for you, you can skip over the parts where I review the cases and go straight on into the adjective endings that you want to learn. If you watch the video from beginning to end, however, you should be able to understand how to use the adjective endings properly because you've reviewed all of the cases and how to use them and when. Here's the short version of how all of the cases work in German. The nominative case is used with the subject or the predicate nominative. The accusative case is used with direct objects, objects of accusative prepositions, and definite time. Dative case is used with the indirect objects, objects of dative prepositions, and objects of dative verbs. The genitive case is used with possessives, objects of genitive prepositions, genitive verbs, or indefinite time. That overview really doesn't do us much good until we define all of those words. So we'll start with the nominative case. The subject is what's doing the action of the sentence, so it's what's acting in the sentence. The predicate nominative is when something is the same as the subject but shows up after the verb or later in the sentence. It only works in English that it's after the verb, as German word order can tell you that you can start with something other than the subject and end the sentence with the other parts. Here are some examples using the nominative case. Ich bin ein Junge. I am a boy. In this sentence, I and the boy are both in the nominative case because forms of sein will not take an accusative. In this sentence, ein Junge is actually a predicate nominative, as it comes after the verb, but is still in the nominative case. Ich werde ein Mann. I become a man. Ich is again the subject, but ein Mann is a predicate nominative. Werden will also not take an accusative. Ich bleibe ein Mann. I remain a man. Ich is still the subject in this sentence, and ein Mann is again a predicate nominative. I remain a man. Ich heiße Herr Antrim. I am called Mr. Antrim. Ich is again the subject, and Herr Antrim is a predicate nominative. Heißen will also not take an accusative. In all of these sentences, the thing before the verb and the thing after the verb are all the same thing, which means that they are both in the nominative case because they are both sort of like the subject. One of them is a subject, and the other one is a predicate nominative. In the accusative case, we have direct objects. The direct object is what is receiving the action of the sentence. The accusative prepositions would be für, which means for, um, around, durch, through, ohne, without, and gegen, against. And it's used with time when you're talking about something that's specific, which means that it has to be exactly that time. For example, Ich kaufe jeden Tag für ein Geschenk ein. I shop every day for a gift. Wir laufen jeden Montag durch den Wald. We walk every Monday through the forest. In these sentences, we have a subject followed by a verb and then a time element. The time element in these sentences are in the accusative case because there are specific times rather than just one day. After the time element in these sentences, we have prepositions, für and durch, both of which are accusative prepositions, so the object that comes after those are accusative. There are no examples of direct objects in these sentences because I'm going to use those in the dative case here in just a minute. In the dative case, we use indirect objects. It's what or who receives the direct object. It's to whom or for whom something is being done. We also use objects of dative prepositions. The dative prepositions are aus, out of or from, außer, besides or except, by, by, at or near, mit, with, nach, after, seit, since, von, from or of, zu, to, and gegenüber, which is across from. We can also use the dative case with objects of dative verbs. Some examples of dative verbs would include antworten, to answer, begegnen, to meet, danken, to thank, Dienen, to serve, and fehlen, to be lacking or missing, folgen, to follow, gefallen, to please or like, gehören, to belong to, glauben, to believe, helfen, to help, passen, to fit. These verbs are known as dative verbs because they take the dative case instead of an accusative for their object. Here are some examples using the dative case. 
Ich gebe deiner Mutter ein Geburtstagsgeschenk von dem Kaufhaus. In this sentence, ich is the subject of the sentence, I am giving, what am I giving is the direct object, ein Geburtstagsgeschenk, a birthday gift, to whom I am giving the birthday gift is your mother, deiner Mutter, and von dem Kaufhaus is a dative prepositional phrase, von being a dative preposition takes dem Kaufhaus instead of das Kaufhaus. Ich helfe meinem Vater mit der Arbeit. I help my father with the work. In this case, we used a dative verb, helfen, which means that meinem Vater must be in the dative case. Mit is a dative preposition, so instead of saying die Arbeit, we say der Arbeit. Wir schenken unseren Schwestern Hunde zum Geburtstag. We are giving our sisters dogs for the birthday. Wir in this sentence is the subject, schenken is our verb, Unseren tells us that it's our, sisters, Schwestern. Notice that there's an N at the end of Schwester, because in this case we have the dative plural, and dative plural objects will take the N at the end of the noun. Hunde is the accusative, it's what's being given, it's the direct object in that sentence. Zu is a dative preposition, which means that we have to have zum Geburtstag, for the birthday. The last case on our list is the genitive case. We use it with possessives, it's used to show ownership, as the word of would in English, such as the color of the shirt. The genitive prepositions would be anstatt, or just sometimes statt, which means instead of, außerhalb, outside of, innerhalb, inside of, trotz, despite or in spite of, während, during, wegen, because of. There are also some genitive verbs which would include sich annehmen, to see to, and sich bedienen, to make use of. Genitive verbs are generally used in academic works rather than in conversational German. I generally just don't use them at all. You can also use the genitive case with indefinite time elements. This means that they're non-specific time, such as, one day I went outside. Here are a couple of examples using the genitive case. Der Hund des Mannes läuft eines Tages außerhalb des Hauses. The dog of the man runs outside of the house one day. In this sentence, we have der Hund, which is the subject, it's the one running. But which dog it is is specified by using des Mannes, of the man. So it's the dog of the man. Eines Tages is one day. It's not a specific day, like Monday or Tuesday, but it's just one day it walked outside of the house. Außerhalb is a genitive preposition, and therefore has to have des Hauses. Don't forget that the genitive masculine and neuter will take an S or an ES at the end of the noun as well. Wegen des Regens tragen wir diese Jeans anstatt dieser Jeans. Because of the rain, we are wearing these jeans instead of these jeans. Wegen is a genitive preposition, so when we start the sentence with wegen, we have to use a genitive object directly after that. Des indicates that it's the genitive case, followed by Regens, which has an S at the end of it, because again, masculine genitive is going to take an S on the end of the noun. Via is the subject of this sentence, Diese jeans is the direct object, it's what we're wearing. Anstatt is instead of, and it's also a genitive preposition. So when we use the plural jeans, we have to use the genitive plural, which is diese, instead of diese. Now that we've reviewed the cases, we're ready to talk about the adjectives. We're going to start with the adjectives after der words, because they're the easiest to remember. All of these adjective endings are going to either be an E or an EN. The ones that take an E are the masculine, feminine, and neuter in the nominative case, and the feminine and neuter in the accusative case. Everything else takes an E-N. I put the dare words on the list also, so that you can remember which dare words are which. A few things to remember is that the dative plural is not only den, but there is also an N at the end of the noun as well. Also, the genitive neuter and masculine will be des, and there is an S at the end of the noun. Now let's try some example sentences using adjectives after dare words. I used uniform sentences so that you can see what the changes look like between the different cases and genders. Each one of these sentences has a subject, a verb, an indirect object, a direct object, and a genitive preposition. This way you get the nominative case first, followed by the verb, then the dative case, then the accusative, and then the genitive. Our first example uses all masculine nouns. Der junge Mann gibt dem alten Mann den guten Hund trotz des alten Streites. The young man gives the old man the good dog in spite of the old fight. 
Notice that all of the adjective endings in this sentence are en, with the exception of the nominative case. Our second example uses only feminine nouns. Die junge Frau gibt der alten Frau die gute Katze wegen der neuen Waffenruhe. The young woman gives the old woman the good cat because of the new truce. In this sentence, we have two adjectives that take an e, the nominative and the accusative. The other two take an en. Our third example uses only neuter nouns. Das junge Mädchen gibt dem älteren Mädchen das gute Pferd trotz des alten Versprechens. The young girl gives the older girl the good horse in spite of the old promise. In this sentence, we again have two adjectives that take an e, while the dative and genitive case take en. Our last example only uses plural nouns. Die jungen Leute geben den älteren Leuten die guten Tiere anstatt der schlechten Tiere. The young people give the older people the good animals instead of the bad animals. Notice that in this sentence, all of the adjectives end in en because all of the plural adjectives after der words will take an en for the adjective ending. Now let's take a look at the adjective endings after ein words. In the nominative and accusative cases for the singular forms, they are very similar to the endings that go on words like diese and jede, which are additional der words. You'll notice that the end of the diese and jede and alle and manche and so on would be er, e, es for the nominative case and en, e, and es for the accusative case in the singular forms. The adjective endings after ein words in those positions are the exact same as they would be at the end of diese, jede, and manche. All of the adjective endings in the plural forms and in the dative and genitive cases will take en after ein words. Now let's try some examples using adjectives after ein words. These examples are the exact same examples that I gave for the der word endings, except now we're using words for a instead of words for the. Our first example again uses only masculine nouns. Ein junger Mann gibt einem alten Mann einen guten Hund trotz eines alten Streites. A young man gives an old man a good dog in spite of an old argument. Notice that as with the dare word endings, the only one that takes something other than an en is the masculine nominative. It takes an er when it's preceded by an ein word, but it takes an e when it's preceded by a dare word. Our second example uses only feminine nouns. Eine junge Frau gibt einer alten Frau eine gute Katze wegen einer neuen Waffenruhe. A young woman gives an old woman a good cat because of the new truce. Notice that the endings for the adjectives here are the same as they were for the dare words. We have two cases where they take an e and two cases where they take an en. The nominative and accusative forms take an e after ein words and der words, and the dative and genitive cases both take an en for the feminine. Our third example uses only neuter nouns. Ein junges Mädchen gibt einem älteren Mädchen ein gutes Pferd trotz eines alten Versprechens. A young girl gives an older girl a good horse in spite of an old promise. In this sentence, we have an es on the nominative and accusative forms and an en on the dative and the genitive. Our last example uses only plural nouns. Keine jungen Leute geben keinen älteren Leuten meine guten Tiere anstatt meine schlechten Tiere. No young people give no older people my good animals instead of my bad animals. In this sentence, as it was with the dare words, all of the endings are en. All of the plural endings after ein words and dare words take an en. Now let's take a look at the unpreceded adjective endings. If you'll notice, the nominative, accusative, and dative cases are the exact same thing as you would see at the end of diese, jede, manche, and welche, and so on. The only difference between the endings on those words and the endings on adjectives that are not preceded by dare words or ein words is in the genitive case. The genitive case it takes an en, er, en, er pattern instead of an es, er, es, er pattern. You'll also notice that I left the in in the plural dative 
for the N that goes at the end of the noun, and also the S in the masculine and neuter forms for the genitive case because that S still goes at the end of the noun. Now let's take a look at some example sentences using unpreceded adjective endings. As before, our first example only uses masculine nouns. Frischer Spargel braucht guten Käse mit frischem Kaffee anstatt alten Kaffees. Fresh asparagus needs good cheese with fresh coffee instead of old coffee. Notice that if I replace all of the adjectives in this sentence using diese, I would end up with the sentence Diese Spargel braucht diesen Käse mit diesem Kaffee anstatt dieses Kaffees. Notice that the only difference is in the genitive case where we have an en at the end of alten instead of the es that we would have if we use diese. Our second example uses only feminine nouns. Gute Wurst braucht frische Salami mit frische Milch anstatt alter Milch. Good sausage needs fresh salami with fresh milk instead of old milk. Again, if you take out all of the adjectives and insert diese, you would end up with the sentence Diese Wurst braucht diese Salami mit dieser Milch anstatt dieser Milch. In this sentence, nothing would really change if we use diese instead of adjectives. Our third example only uses neuter nouns. Gutes Brot braucht kaltes Wasser mit sauberem Eis anstatt schlechten Eises. Again, if we took out all of the adjectives and used diese instead, we would end up with the sentence Dieses Brot braucht dieses Wasser mit diesem Eis anstatt dieses Eises. Again, the only ending that would actually change is the ending on the genitive form schlechten instead of dieses. Our last example uses only plural nouns. Gute Wurste brauchen frische Brötchen mit frischen Getränken anstatt alte Getränke. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want, you can leave a comment below using some of these adjective endings that you just learned.